Now let's take a quick look at your deltas. So what is a delta? A delta is a low-lying triangular or fan-shaped landform formed where a river deposits sediment as it flows into a standing body of water like an ocean, sea or lake. So where will these deltas actually be formed? They're going to be formed at the mouth of large rivers, especially in the lower course, and they can be common in coastal regions with gentle offshore gradients. So what are some conditions necessary for delta formation? So firstly, you're going to need to have a large load of sediment that's going to be carried by the river, right? Then you're going to need a low energy environment at the river mouth. So things like a calm sea or a calm lake. So when we're talking about a calm sea or a calm lake, we mean that the sea must have a very weak current. You are then going to need a shallow offshore gradient where your water does not wash sediment away quickly. So, so far we already identified that you need to have a large load of sediment in the river, you need to have a weak current in the ocean or river mouth, and your sea needs to be shallow. You then need to have slow moving water which will allow your sediment to settle. Remember, if you can have your fast moving water, it's going to constantly move the sediment up and down. It's not going to be able to have time to settle. There needs to be no strong tides or currents because that's going to remove your deposited material. And ideally, you need your vegetation like your reeds or mangroves to trap sediments and stabilize the area. So how does a delta actually form? So firstly, as your river is going to enter a standing body of water, its velocity is going to suddenly decrease. Now, I like to explain this in a certain way. Imagine you are running towards a group of people that are standing still. Once you reach the group of people, are you going to be able to continue running? Or will you have to slow down and move through them slowly in order to pass? Now, the answer to that is that you will need to slow down in order to pass. Now, that's the exact same thing as a river. Once your river is going to be moving and it's going to enter your standing body of water, remember a standing body of water is going to be water that's not going to be really moving, right? So once the river is going to enter this ocean or the sea, it's going to slow down very quickly, right? Its velocity is going to suddenly decrease. And this loss of energy is then going to cause the river to deposit its load. Now your heavy particles are going to settle first and your finer ones are going to be carried further out. So for those of you that will be wondering, why will your heavier particles settle first? Now we need to remember that when your river is going to enter the sea, the saline conditions of the sea are going to cause your fine clay particles to stick together, right? And this is going to make the particles much larger and much heavier. And that's what's going to cause it to sink. Now, when I say saline conditions, I'm talking about the presence of your high concentration of dissolved salts in your water. Because remember, your ocean is very salty. Now, once your particles are going to settle, the deposited material will then accumulate to form a delta. And the river is then going to split into several distributaries and that's going to spread water and sediment. Now over time, this is then going to build up new land in a triangular or a fan shape. Now remember when we're talking about a fan shape, we're not talking about the fan that you're going to find in your ceiling. We're talking about a hand fan. And this is going to form a delta. Now this delta will only survive if the ocean currents are not strong enough to remove the sediments. Because remember, if you can have a very strong current that's going to come through there, it's going to wash all these sediments away and your delta will no longer be there. So what are some characteristics of your deltas? Your deltas are going to have a network of distributaries and these are your small river branches. Your shape may be triangular, fan-shaped or a bird's foot. Although I don't really see a bird's foot, but I, I'm not too sure. Your deltas are going to be made up of your fine sediments, things like your silt and clay. And they're going to form in your low energy and your slow flowing environments. Now your deltas are often going to contain wetlands, marshes or mangrove swamps and your deltas are going to be rich in biodiversity and they can be very fertile. So what are the positive impacts of your deltas? So your fertile soils from your silt deposits are excellent for farming, farming things like rice and sugarcane. They are going to support your rich biodiversity, so things like fish, birds and plants. Your deltas are going to provide livelihoods. Examples would be through fishing, agriculture and tourism. Deltas will create natural buffer zones against storms and coastal flooding. And your deltas can become sites for harbors and urban development. Now, what are the negative impacts of your deltas? 
Firstly, they're going to be prone to flooding, especially during your storms or heavy rains. Secondly, they can become swampy and difficult to build on. Thirdly, your salt water intrusion may damage your crops and fresh water supply. Pollution and industrial development can destroy ecosystems. Distributaries may change course, disrupting agriculture or settlements. And remember, because there's going to be standing water, mosquitoes are going to be attracted to this water and that can cause malaria. Now, I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Now, if you found that this video was useful, please don't forget to give the video a like. Please subscribe for more. Now, if you have any questions or topics that you want me to cover next, please drop them in the comment section. I always read the comments and I will always reply. Thank you so much for watching. Stay cool, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.